A well-sculpted, sleek, athletic German body with perfect proportions, paired with a handsome yet understated fascia. And the subject is... Me! Oh, and my 2017 VW Jetta. Hello people of the internet, I'm Nico, and today I've set myself a challenge. In these times of high gas prices, I'm going to be testing the fuel efficiency of my Jetta to answer the question, do you really need a hybrid, or does this suffice? So, it starts with a trip to the gas station where I filled up, had a sizable hole punched in my wallet, and still trembling at the likely prospect of having to file for bankruptcy, I gingerly joined the interstate highway. After a few minutes, I settled down into the most mind-numbingly boring and slow drive of my life, though I was still eager to beat the standard set by the horrific-looking monster that is the Toyota Prius. But one thing was still bothering me, a certain decision I made to give myself an edge in this challenge. So, in the interest of saving as much fuel as possible, I've turned off the air conditioning, which, if you don't know anything about the southeastern United States, is like going to visit Santa Claus at the North Pole wearing nothing but a grass skirt and a coconut bra. So, while this was supposed to be a tips and tricks video on how to get the best fuel economy, it's very quickly turning into a cooking show on how to best air fry a German, which, in case you're wondering, is at 325 degrees for about an hour. Kind of ironic that a German would get cooked this way. Sorry, dark joke. See what I did there? Dark joke? Before you cancel me, one of my best friends is Jewish, and he approves of my humor, so now you can't do anything. Also, if you got offended by a joke, then go live under a rock because you won't be able to handle the real world. Sorry. My case rested. I spent a few more minutes panting like a dog before I finally gave in and turned on the air conditioning to avoid choking on my own sweat. Shortly after losing my battle with Alabama's weather, I made it to the exit where it was time to turn around and head back. I was finally halfway there, and I followed up this momentous occasion in the only way I know possible, by singing Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. After the celebration, it was time to get back to business, so I checked my standings, and... Officially over 48 MPG. We're getting there, boys. We're getting there. To help improve my acceptable but unideal standings, I pulled another trick from my sleeve. Get down nice and low. Gotta get aerodynamic. I learned this from mountain biking. Get nice and low. That's a little air hitting you. It's because your upper body, that's what really, like, is not very aerodynamic. So you get down nice and low, and then it's smooth. Very, very smooth air. Look at that. Almost 50 MPG going uphill. All because of me going down like this. After proving to myself that I should have studied to be an aerospace engineer, I finally reached my exit and pulled into the gas station where I started at, where I filled up again and received the smallest gas bill I've ever had at $5.04. So, the pièce de résistance, we did 63 miles total, and I pumped 1.249 gallons of gas, meaning that according to my calculator, not the car, we did 50.44 MPG, which is first off more than what the car projected at 48.6, and also pretty damn close to the Toyota Prius's 53 MPG on the highway. And all we had to do was stop up all the traffic on Interstate 459. So while I didn't exactly beat the Toyota Prius, I'd say we did pretty good considering we were only two MPG off. And what I think we can learn from this is that it's not so much what you drive that matters, but more so how you drive it. With that being said, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Comment below whether or not you like my singing. Until next time, people of the internet, peace out. <laughs>